the, the the train keeps on going, and it's, it's nonstop when it comes to Marvel shows. We have the latest Marvel entry, Ms. Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, lots of going on with Ms. Marvel from the comic book side, but is there a lot going on on the show side? That's a great question. That's what we're here for. Yeah. So I know our listeners like to listen to our podcast to get all the inside juice about the Marvel comic related stuff. And I have a lot. There's a lot, actually a lot going on, so we can talk about. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Cause most of the time with these Disney Plus shows, we're usually talking more about just the shows themselves and less about the comics background like we do with the movies. So Re- recently, recently. Um, yeah. But I think that the last show that had this much Marvel comic juice in it was. Probably Falcon Winter Soldier uh, was, was pretty close. Maybe no, no, not even Luki. Falcon Winter Soldier for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so there's a lot sense. going on. But what do you think of this? Before we get started, though, uh, yeah, okay. Um, what I think about it, I feel like it's a little bit irrelevant because people really like the show. I love um, it, man. This, this show was a yeah. This show was a huge hit. Um, not just just anecdotally, like. People are talking about it online, of course, but this also, I think the streaming data said that this is the best Disney Disney Plus um, outing of any show ever, which is which is nuts. I'm, I'm, I wonder why everybody decided to chime in for this one. I wonder why everybody connected to this one. I'm curious. I mean, I, I think it's just very well done. I I think that mm-hmm. if if this isn't the best first episode of a Disney Plus Marvel show, um then it's right up there with WandaVision for the best first show, first episode. Yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm biased towards WandaVision, but I'm going to have to say that WandaVision was definitely the best first episode. And I'm, I wonder, so here's my thing, and I'm, I'm going to say this before we get started. This show didn't connect to me as, as it's connecting to other people, and I'm not 100% sure, 100% sure why. Uh, and I think it might be just because I feel like I've seen this before, maybe from the comics. Mm-hmm. If you look at, like, I know you're a huge Spider Man fan. Yeah. This is a Spider Man. This is a Spider Man story, 100. percent Like right. young yeah. kid gets powers, mm-hmm. hides it from his parents. Awkward. Nobody likes the kid. You know, all kinds of stuff. And right. Kamala Khan definitely right. fits in that category. Yeah. Awkward. Not popular. Nobody likes her. She has a really good friend. A good friend really yeah, likes yeah, her. High school, like you got like knows. you got two two yeah. friends. Yeah, exactly. Right. A little roman- a little romantic stuff going on. Uh, add in some Pakistani Muslim culture, and then boom, you got a show. And I, and I like a lot. Of, I like all the authenticity of it. I like you it know. I really didn't connect it to Spider Man, but you're right. That's probably one reason I like it a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. If you're looking for if you're looking for a traditional Spider Man show, so a, a, a Spider Man show. Serial show, episodic, this is it. It's not Spider-Man, but you're going yeah. to get the same beats, 100%. Right. Like, right. Kamala Khan's going to figure out her powers. She's going to have to hide from the authorities. She's mm-hmm. going to hide from her parents. Eventually, her parents might find out. Who knows? So, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely hitting all those buttons. And I think it's, it's, not, it's not by accident. Um, this, is a, this is a tried and true um, comic book method. I mean, there's tons of characters like... From Marvel, um, the Sleepwalker, Doc Hark, uh, Spider Man, of course. But then you got Kamala Khan when she came out. That character. There's lots, lots of characters uh, that fits this um, mold of young superhero who doesn't know themselves that decides to fight crime. So yeah, I'm hoping for but, a training but, montage say, next episode. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, but I kind of feel like this. I don't know. Hey, you tell me what was hitting it. What was hitting for you with the show that you that really connected to you? Because I, maybe I was watching it in a weird time. Uh-huh. But what what made you really like it? Well, I didn't pick up on it, but you definitely nailed it with the Spider Man stuff. That's obviously one big reason that I like it. This has given me everything you know so far. This has given me what I wanted from the Tom Holland Spider Man movies, but didn't get. Um, I love the opening. You know, we start out with a song by the Weekend instead of theme music. Mm. Um, which is very different from everything Marvel's ever done before. I don't think any movie, including Guardians of the Galaxy, opens up with pop music. Um, Mm. Mm. That was great. The the animated sequence that um, Kamala Khan did at the beginning was very cool. I I enjoyed that a lot. Um, All the animation stuff throughout the episode. It's very colorful. It's a very colorful, bright show. It's very colorful. 
Um, it's heavily inspired uh, by Edgar Wright and his directing styles. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm saying that as an absolute fact. This this show, or at least this episode, lots of Edgar Wright influence in it. Uh, and uh, the reason I'm saying that's a fact and not an opinion is that they even inserted a scene from one of Edgar Wright's movies into the episode when she's laying on the couch upside yeah, down watching the, TV. The, the guitar, the guitar scene. Yeah, the, yeah, the guitar Pilgrim movie. What was it called? World. Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, versus the I've world. never yeah. seen that. Great movie. But I knew as soon as I saw it. When I saw it on the screen, I was like, well, Mike's going to probably want to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. So, like, all those <laughs> things that you saw. Like, so, she, when she's uh, or her friends uh, walking his bike from one place to another and they're talking to each other on their phones, all of that is exactly like the kind of thing that you would see in an Edgar Wright movie. You'd see it in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. You'd see it in uh, Baby Driver where things are synchronized in the background of what's going on, um, you know, in the main action. Um, there was a scene where she's walking up the stairs and she gets an idea and the Zuzu system like happens to turn on a light at the exact same time that she gets the idea. Um, and there's a little animated light bulb that goes, goes with that. That's totally an, an Edgar Wright style thing. So I'm just loving the flavor of the direction of this. Um, and it's really fun, really fun. I like it a lot. Yeah, and uh, well, here's what I think. I think that it's Marvel has had, if you look at the you know? la- yeah, if you look at the last series, if you look at um, Moon Knight, if you look at Loki, if you look at Falcon and Soldier, all those shows, even Hawkeye, all those shows tend to have the same kind of flavors to it. It was a little not, I wouldn't say dark, but it had the same kind of tone. It was, right. it felt kind of like it was trying to touch on a certain kind of demographic and age group versus mm-hmm. this show which is definitely taking the funnest parts of, I would say, Spider-Man um, Homecoming and, and Spider-Man Far From Home, yeah. going that angle, but making that, but even trying to get to a younger crowd, having fun with it, making it bright and light. Yeah, it's totally 100%. I think it's, um, I think it's doing, doing that. It definitely feels different. It looks different. Uh, it's cool to watch. All the acting looks great. And like all the tone, I mean, all the themes are very familiar. Overbearing parents. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a society where 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 young girls can't do nearly as much or even close to as much as young boys for obvious reasons. Yeah, particularly um, her, and, all, uh, and her then society, her culture, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you put all yeah all the issues that um that when like immigrants have as far as like trying to achieve and trying to be something and like and how like like other cultures don't necessarily do that. And then you got Kamala who just wants to have fun. She just and like did she say that? She said she just wants to have fun. Like she just wants to go to a Avengers Con, you know? And like mm-hmm. it's not even even it, it is as a plot point, it's not even unreasonable for her to go. It's like when no. she went to Avengers Con, it was a very tame, very almost I would almost say lame event, you know, that wasn't yeah, even yeah. that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like so I it's would like, say you know, that con that she went her. to, however, they had better uh, decoration than any con I've ever gone to. Yeah, and I mean, I felt a little embarrassed when her, when her parents came in and her dad was dressed <laughs> as a Hulk. But then I also felt bad. I love that felt scene. Bad but yeah, I felt I felt embarrassed for I think everybody uh, during that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they know what they're they know what they're doing, and I and I and I think that. Um, just the age group and everything else is it's perfect, hundred percent. But yeah. it's just not do. Like I don't know why it's not clicking with me right now. It could, it's, it might not even be for me. There's plenty of stuff that Marvel has done that I'm fine with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everybody else tends to love it, except for our insole friends <laughs> um, out in the world that did, they did try to review bomb this. Did you right. see the chart? There's a there's someone did a graphic of it and like it got a ton of like A's like everybody loves it and then it got a ton of D's everybody hates it yeah it's but like, like uh, the on a D's scale of one to ten even... yeah there were a bunch of tens there were like a good chunk of nines and then um a bunch of everything ones. else but the, was pretty low the until you got to the ones and yeah there was a ton of ton of ones yeah. And then the ones didn't even beat it. Like these these poor little single boys who can't get a girlfriend. I keep hitting the keyboard trying to get that one to go up, and it's like, right? You know, like who cares? Like, yeah, you know, it's just like, it's, and this is a this is an interesting point. 
this is the reason that the Kamala Khan Miss Marvel character was even created in the right. comics mm-hmm. um, because Marvel was trying to open up the demographics. They were trying to get more people to read the comics and they started to diversify. And Kamala Khan uh, definitely, she, she was billed as the first Muslim superhero in Marvel. Um, and, uh, and that just got a lot of buzz. People bought the comics, of course. But then, like, in her own right, she was a great character. Yeah. So have you read a lot of her Those comics? Books. You know, I've read one. Um, I do know that there's a scene where the you know, her brother was praying and her father was like, if you don't, if you keep praying, you won't be able to eat or something like that. That's directly yeah. from the comics. So it's, huh. it's cool. kind of pretty close. My knowledge of Kamala Khan came from, and this is kind of odd, not really, but the Avengers video game that came out like a couple years ago. Have you ever played that? Uh, I think my kids played that. Yeah, it's so you should actually talk to your kids. So, like, the whole main story is about Kamala Khan. She goes to a uh, Avengers like theme park. Uh, she gets exposed to some kind of um, like some kind of bizarre chemicals, um, and then she gets powers. Uh, so it's very so the the, the Avengers storyline is very similar to the show storyline. Yeah, which yeah, is not even close to being similar to the to the comic. That's interesting. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's mm-hmm. like, that's very similar. Yeah. Um, pretty much exactly what yeah. happened. And like the, the voice acted just, like, it's a little bit, a little bit off, but like all those beats are there. Yeah. And the the voice acting is kind of, it's really good in the, in the, in the um, video game too. The only thing that we really need to talk about is um, her powers. I'm not sure if you really want to touch on that net yet, or you want to wait. I, I I want to learn all we can about uh, Kamala while we're up up at the top here. So yeah, tell us about all it. All right, all right. So uh, we've I've talked about this. When you have a character who can physically move their body in a way that looks uncomfortable, like Mister Fantastic, it does mm-hmm. not translate well on screen. So as you saw in in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Mr. Fantastic did not use his powers very much uh, until he was pulled apart like silly string. Yeah. Um, but com- in the comics, Kamala Khan is a transmorph, which means she can like make herself get bigger. She can like grow physically taller or she mm-hmm. can like make her fist bigger or she can make her hand bigger or she can make her foot bigger. So it's actually kind of comical how she looks in her. It, she does her powers. Yeah. Uh, and that's not what we see. Like it, in the show, do you remember that in the scene in the show where she like, falls and leans out and her powers like create a hand to catch her friends. Remember, right. remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That in the comics, that would have been like her flesh doing that. Okay. Um, right. So I'm very, I'm very curious about why they made that decision. I think it looks better. Maybe there's another plot um, point that could be had here in the comics. Um, Kamal Khan is part inhuman, and that's why she had her powers. Mm. Um, and we talked about he, we've talked about inhumans before. Yeah, uh, do you remember that, Mike? We talked about that during the Eternals, right? We talked about doing that during the Eternals. We've talked about doing um, Mar- uh, Doctor Strange. What character in Doctor Strange was an inhuman, Mike? Mm. Um, oh, no. is it the Star Girl? Cool. You can do it. Is it girl? No, no. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, it's Black Bolt. Oh, so, sorry, yes, Black right. Bolt. Uh, yeah, I, I never Black would have remembered that. He's the king. He's the king of the humans. He's the king. <laughs> uh, uh, whatever. I don't, I'm sick of people talking bad about the humans. Anyway, no, in the comics, I'm just he's laughing a human. At Black Bolt. What's his name? His name's like oh, okay. uh, Black. What's his name? Sta- oh Lord. What's okay. His anyway, name? what's his name? Blackaton Boltatron, something like that. Blo- Blo- okay, just make fun of him. Bulgarian he, or something. He could literally like that. destroy the planet. Anyway, so this is important. In the comics, she is part inhuman. That's how she got her powers. Now, yeah. we also know that Carol Danvers has some connections to the Kree, which also has connections to the, to the inhumans. So that's kind of why the oh. Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel connection is there. Yeah. Very good. Mm. Um,. I have a theory about how they're going to recreate this connection, but I'm not sure just yet. Um, But, and now we'll we'll move on. The band that Kamala puts on in the show, there's a history of these superpower bands in the Marvel comics. Mm -hmm. Uh, Captain Marvel in the comics, the original Captain Marvel had these things called nega, nega bands. 
Uh, and these nega bands had these di- different properties. There's also a band called the Quantum Bands that a character called Quasar used. And the Quantum Bands are actually more applicable to this example because they would do the same things that Kamala could do. Like mm. she could, she can create things with her thoughts and the Quantum Bands could do that. This might be Marvel trying to introduce the Quantum Bands, but I don't think so. But it could. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, in her, the um, case, like the effects, like her powers, they're all kind of crystally and kind of reminiscent of the multiverse. Um, you know, maybe that's a tie to Quantum Bands. What What did the Quantum Bands powers look, look like in the comics? In the comics, the Quantum Bands were, I had a goldish, yellowish look to them. Uh-huh. And um, whenever, so, but the person who welded them we could create anything they wanted to based off their thoughts. And for my comic book family out there who's listening to this, we all know that the Quantum Bands were based off of DC's character, uh, Green Lantern, which is the original character who's had these power rings that allowed them to create things with their thoughts. Uh, so, yeah, so DC is the one who, started that and then marvel of course you know did some creative licenses and so right now what we're seeing with kamala harris is sort of a kind of a sort of in that vein i also wonder uh, if we don't know band that is going to tie yeah. into the 10 rings that shang chi has well mike maybe because if you notice at the beginning of, in the episode where she put the bands on she like, had a vision. She saw these things. Yes. Uh, it sort of looks like what we've seen from the astral plane when you right. travel to the astral plane. Yeah, yeah. Um, those things, wherever we saw, are going to come back up in the show at some point. So be ready for that. Um, but it, it, this is like a this is a this yeah, is a that was one question that I, or, I went was there Pakistani. anything like that from the comic that you read or? <sighs> well, no. It's like. Whatever this artifact is, I think it's something that the show created. Yeah. Uh, but there is a history in Marvel Comics of tons of different artifacts that give people powers. This thing could be any any hundreds of different things. So until we get a name for it or until we see more closely its abilities, we won't know. Um, but if you look at um, Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings, the Ten Rings in the movies, we don't know the origin of. Um, but in the comics, they're extraterrestrial. Um, this band, however she's using it, seems to be very old. It seems that her family has had some history with this band. That's how she yeah, got it's her it. Yeah, grandmothers. Uh, we, we just, we, yeah, so we just got to wait. Lots of hints in this episode um, but, that her grandmother was very much like Kamala is. She had her head mm-hmm. in the clouds. Yeah, she and like lots of fantasies. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's like when you talk about fantasies and imagination. It looks like that what that band probably uses imagination and fantasy. So like you have to be able to think about what mm-hmm. you want to do. Mm-hmm. And so if you have someone who is like very imaginative, right? Very and we've seen Kamala Khan do all these cool things with imagination. Right. If you have somebody like that, then maybe they can use this band. But uh in the comics m- normally you would have two bands. This is only one band. Mm-hmm. I think that Kamala Khan in the comics wore a band, but I think it was decorative. I don't think it had powers. I could be completely wrong. I'm going to do some more research on that. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. It's like it's pretty exciting to see that this band is going to have some history to it. So it's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's it'll be pretty interesting to see what happens to it, and how she uses it. Um, but we still got to wait. Right. Anything else about it? It's fun. But uh, uh no. I mean, I think the comics. I think what I think what we're seeing in the show is a good translation from what we've seen in the comics. Right. Um, in the comics, you will become an Avenger. Uh, and so remember when we had Arthur Geis on the show? Mm-hmm. No, sorry, I'm sorry, Arthur Geese on the show. Uh, he did uh, say that we're getting to a point where we're going to get the Young Avengers, and Kamala Khan was in the Young Avengers. Uh, but I think what we're going to get to see is a whole new brand of Avengers. Like at some point, we'll get to see Kamala Khan. We'll see some other people. Uh, so we're looking. We're it's, we're slowly building the universe back up, very very slowly though. So we don't know how long it's going to take for us to get like a actual another Avengers group together. But um, she's definitely was a she's she's a very popular character. She she teamed up with with Spider Man. She's teamed up with Wolverine. Um, so she's not she, she's been around the been around for a while. I think she, I think she was created in two thousand eleven. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, 
Yes. No, oh, I'm sorry. 2014. So she really hasn't been around that long, but she's got a really rich history in the comics. She's been busy. Hmm. Cool. Let me, uh, I want to show you, uh, click on the link for her, if you can, click on the link and you will see her, a picture of the comic character, and you'll notice what I'm talking about when I, when I say the band and her physical abilities, you'll see it. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, right. Yeah, she's got, it looks kind of, it looks almost like the Ten Rings, actually, from the movie. Is on her mm-hmm. wrist, and then her yeah, hands, her hands sort are of, much but, bigger, yeah. But it's like, but it's like... What I think they did was when they designed the show is like they took that band that she's wearing, which looks decorative, and just decided yeah. to um, make it a uh, part of her. And I, I, I'm sorry for all my comic book fans out there. She's a polymorph. She's a polymorph, which is different. Mm. There you go. That's that's all I know about Miss um, Marvel. But I'm sure you have a lot of questions, right, Mike? So I'm ready I've got for some them. questions. I got some questions. Yeah. Uh... All right, let's talk about Bruno. Mm-hmm. We don't talk about Bruno. Oh, I'm not no. sure why I know that song. Yeah. Did your kids watch that movie? Your kids are half grown, right? Yeah, that, yeah, but we watched that movie. We all watched that movie. It was a good movie. Okay. Did you watch it? Okay. Yeah. No, I was at a friend's house and they were watching it. Uh, okay. I'm not going to willfully just, watch a kid's movie. You probably just added that song to your 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 library and listen to it every now and then probably. Okay. Like, anyway, Bruno. Yeah. Tell uh, us Bruno, Bruno. What's his last name? Carelli. 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 Yeah. Carelli. He's from the comics and that's, and that's it. <laughs> that's all he is. He's from the comics. He's like, he's like our friend. He's like, he's tech savvy. He knows who she is. That's right. it. He's, so uh, that he's our Ned. Accurate. Right. Ned is the guy from Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, he's the guy in the chair. Also, her friend Nadia is also, she was wearing her jeep in the show. She's also from the comics as well. Uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I figure she's going to be play a much bigger role in the in the later episodes. But we didn't see, we didn't really see her much. But she's got like, if you look at the art art uh, the art stuff for the show, she's got like her own little like picture or whatever. So I'm I'm just kind of curious why they didn't show her more. Um. There's also some characters we have not seen. We've seen her brother, but there's a, there's a guy we haven't seen. Uh, there's an there's a older man we haven't seen. Like There's a couple of different characters we haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, lots anyway, of... Next looking question. At the, uh, looking at the um, IMDb top cast. Uh, the Zuzu system. The Zuzu no system idea. is made by Bruno. No idea? No, I, I, I know it's not anything to do with the comics that I've it's, seen. It sounds uh, like it sounds like the research. type of thing that's like a uh, like an Easter egg. You know, I don't know. It sounds like an Easter egg, but it's not. It's not. Okay. And here's the deal: come up, Miss Hair, Miss Marvel, Miss Harris. <laughs> I, there's a lot going on with that. Three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did it again. Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan has not been in the Marvel comics long enough to have a real big Easter egg. Like she's only been around. She's been around for less than 10 years. Mm-hmm. And when you look at Spider-Man, he's been around since 1964. Right. Right. So he's like, we're talking, we're talking decades that uh, Easter egg could pop up and decades of comics, but she's hasn't been around that long. So I mean, it could have been like a Bruce a Banner thing, bunch you know? of like the Zuzu system could have been something Bruce Banner worked on, you know, who knows? Just, uh, that, it no, seemed, it seemed like something that came from like the comics somewhere, but I guess not. Mm-hmm. Can I, can I, uh, before you move on to your next question, can I, can I point out something that's interesting? Sure. If you watch Hawkeye, and yeah. then you watched this episode, and then you watched um, Spider-Man um, No Way Home, all these episodes are doing the same thing, which is like showing what the world would be like if you had the Avengers. And all, it's like kind of gross what happens to them. Like we're selling merchandise, we have T-shirts, we've got comic mm. cons. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a, it's like a not, it's not complete one hundred percent hero worship, but the population definitely are looking at the heroes as in a way that I think would make all of them very uncomfortable. I'm curious if that is going to change. Like if I, I don't think this coincidence. If you look at how the movies and the TV shows all watch together. There's a common theme, and this is not. This has to be something that they're planning to make it because, like, right now, everybody loves the heroes. I can see a world where that changes somehow, mm-hmm. some kind of event where people hate the heroes. 
And if you look at like typical um like trilogies or stuff like that, there's always a point where the heroes become the villain, right? And so I'm curious to see, yeah. uh, especially after this rumor that just came out um yesterday, I'm curious to see if they're going to do something with this. Uh, because it's not a coincidence that has that, that that Kamala Harris goes to a con. And they're selling T-shirts and they're kind of hero worshiping, and and then we go to Hawkeye and there's we go to Hawkeye and there's a play with the heroes, and then we watch Spider-Man um, No Way Home, and they were actually going to put the Captain America shield on Statue of Liberty. Right. <laughs> so you yeah, put all that, that together, and you're like, right. yeah, something's going on, and no one's really talked about it. The show, and it, they're doing it in a very clever way, where it's like you just have to notice it. But I'm curious what's going to happen or what's going to change. Anyway. Keep I'm going. wondering how many more times you're going to call her Kamala Harris instead of Kamala Khan. Probably. Okay. How many? How many have? How many have I done it? Uh, twice. All right. Keep a keep a running count. I want to know <laughs> how many times I do it because I'm going to do it quite a bit. All right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It was interesting. She. Uh. What. What. What do they call it? I'm drawing a blank. What do they call it when you dress up as a comic book character or cosplay? Cosplay. There we go. Yeah, she was telling her parents that the cosplay was uh, historical reenactment. So I was like, "Yeah, you're kind of right." Mm-hmm. Yeah, in her, it is. In, in it's her for world, fake, it is. for for fake thing. In her world, it's, it's yeah. In her world is not cosplay. It's like a yeah. But in our world, it's definitely like fake. That's no such thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, anyway. Did you see anything in the con that like stood out to you? Any t-shirts or anything in the background that's that's uh, cool? There was so much. It was like yeah, a was blind a, and light of right of of Easter egg junk. It was like that. that there's one little picture where Captain America was like, "Thank you, welcome, America." And it shows his butt. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was kind of fun, <laughs> right? Um, but I didn't really see anything else. I am curious, like uh, how how like how often were the superheroes videotaped throughout the movies for mm. them to actually say, okay, we have enough inf- we have enough in- intellectual properties to make a t-shirt out of it. Like, like it's like how much is real versus how much is, is fake. It's, it's kind of funny. Anyway. Right. Uh, but I didn't see anything that stood out. Okay. Uh, we talked about it a little bit. She kind of goes into the astral plane after she puts her uh, band mm-hmm. on. Um, mm-hmm. We talked about that when we were doing. We don't know it's the astral night. plane. We do not. What's well, something? We don't like know it's astral plane. We think it could be astral plane. We got to be very careful. I don't want to do what YouTubers do and make plane. make the clear. Yeah, I don't want to make declarative statements and then have to backtrack later. It's so we don't know what it like is. That. It's some plane that she went to. She went yeah. to a plane. Yeah, she went to a plane. A different plane of existence. Nobody else saw mm-hmm. it. Her friend that was standing right there with her didn't see it. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. that was pretty cool. Um, throughout the episode, there's a word that keeps popping up every now and then. And after I heard it for probably the third or fourth time, I was like, oh yeah, I've heard Jay talking about that on previous podcasts. Uh, it's also the last word that we hear in this episode. And it's cosmic. Mm. She talks about um, Captain Marvel's power is being cosmic. She talks about she kind of just uses cosmic as the word cool, I think. Um, she talks about her powers as being cosmic. I think you said that at some point Marvel's going to start delving into the like cosmic series of comics or something like that. Mm-hmm. Am I Am I on the right track? Yes. You're you're on the right track. So in the sh- in the comics, Kamala Harris has a connection to Captain Marvel. Kamala Khan. Um, Kamala, yeah, Kamala. Did I just, did I just say Kamala here? Yes, you did. <laughs> Three. Kamala Khan has a connection to Captain Marvel. Hundred yeah. um, yeah. percent. I think that we we know for a fact there's going to be another movie. Uh, I think it comes out in twenty. I think it comes out next year called the marvels that's right. going to have Ca- captain marvel kamala khan ms marvel and then uh monica rambo from one division we like we know that monica rambo is in space with um samuel jackson we know that we mm-hmm. know that there's, there's going to be a secret invasion storyline we know that 
So, so, so don't be surprised that at the end, here's my prediction. Okay, let's predict it right now. All right, do it. End of the series, the end of the Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel series, Captain Marvel shows up and says, I need your help. And for Makes some sense. reason, they go out into space together. I can okay. see that happening. Just and 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 wherever that band is, um, and if you look at the band, if you look at Shang Chi's rings, it's all starting to slowly realm up to something bigger than Earth. Uh, I'm I, I'm curious what's going to happen with uh, Th- Thor: Love and Thunder. I'm curious how that's going to play into it. it. It's getting about time for Marvel to start telling us in these shows and movies the bigger picture they've not done that and here's the deal when you saw the avengers right and the avenger the the very first avengers movie and you saw the fan that saw fans at the end you knew that at some point we were going to fight thanos you knew it and you knew that over time we were getting introduced to the different affinity stones more characters being introduced we were building and building and building to mark the avengers infinity saga we don't know what they're building to. We have no links. Nothing's. You can't say that. You can't say anything is linked to anything right now. And that's confusing to me because at some point they're going to have to do it. And so I'm, it's kind of weird that it's taken so long. So hopefully Kamala Khan could be the catalyst to that. But mm-hmm. it's taken a while for them to decide what what's the bigger picture here. You know, like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense because we know they're good at it. But yeah. it's not happening. So, well, it's good for you guys. It's uh, uh, you know nice to be surprised. Good for you. Good for you guys. You watch these movies too. Well, I'm talking about you, you comic book readers that uh, uh, you know, have things spoiled for yourselves a lot. I don't like being. I, I want. I want. I want some anticipation. Like I, I want some excitement. I right. want to look at something and think that's coming. Mm-hmm. That they're going to do that. Okay. And there's nothing to that. There's none of that just yet. So we have no like, uh, like Uber King... cosmic villain that is no. clearly We know Okay. We know Kang's coming from Loki. We know and we know Kang's will be a big villain in the new Ant Man movie. But mm-hmm. that's it. And like we should have seen something about him some somewhere. And we haven't heard we have we had a whole movie based on the multiverse. No, let me rephrase that. We've had two movies based on the multiverse, right? And the multiverse was was revealed in a show, and nothing's happened. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, <laughs> like it's it's getting it's getting to the point where you have to um, poop or get off the toilet there, Marvel, and like, <laughs> you, you, and it's starting to look to me like they don't know what they're doing. And that's not mm. good. It just it's starting to look like that, and I know it's not true because you have a whole room for people making a hundred grand a year to do the ideas. And I know they know what they're doing, but I can't see it. I don't know what it is. So yeah. maybe they're trying to keep a secret. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Did you notice there was a uh, mid credit scene? Yes. Thing? Yeah. Okay. I did. Did you tell me tell us what about happens. it? Cause, you tell me what happens. Uh, okay. We're in some kind of an office. There's a woman and a man. Um, there's some kind of, uh, FBI or something like that. The woman shows the man on her phone, a, a video of Miss Marvel at the Avengers con. And the man says, yep, let's bring her in. That is damage control. We've seen them before, Mike. They were in oh. the man, by the way, he was in Spider-Man No Way Home. We've seen him. Okay. Uh, and we've seen damage control before because they were in uh, another Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, so right. their job is basically to keep track of superheroes and see what's going on with superheroes. That's your job. Uh, and so now, next episode, Kamala Khan's going to have to worry about being chased by feds, you know, which is going to be pretty interesting. We have right. to wait and see. Hmm. And this is, this is typical Spider-Man stuff, man. Like, what I hope this show does is make Kamala Khan's life a living hell. Give her a bunch of different problems that she can't solve over and over again. Make it worse, get worse, get worse. Um, Because that's what the that's the that's the formula for Spider-Man. Like, just make it so he has tons of problems and somehow he gets out of it every time. But there's always a cost. And so I want I want that to happen here. I want Kamala Khan to, to struggle um, because it's, it's, it's going to be more fun to watch. So I hope it's I hope it's gonna be good. Cool. 
I I, That's I don't really want this. I only kind of want this, but do you think there's a chance that Spider-Man will show up in this show? You know what, Mike? I was actually thinking that when I was watching this. I watched it on the train. I downloaded uh, this is a plug for Disney Plus. You can actually download your episodes on the phone and you can watch them whenever you like. I watched this episode on my commute to work. I watched half of it on the way to work and the other half on the way home. Very convenient, awesome. fun. It looked great. Yeah, super great. Technology is amazing. Imagine we, uh, when we were teenagers, Mike, that you could just watch <laughs> movies on our phones. Would we? We wouldn't have done anything else. Like right. these kids are like watching like YouTube clips and TikTok. I would have been that kid who had a bunch of movies downloaded on his phone, just watching movies all day. Like you know, that's, that's what I would have done. I don't know what these kids are doing. Yeah. <laughs> these kids don't know how to use the technology because they're not doing it right. Anyway, <laughs> um, I was just thinking how cool it would be if Spider-Man made a guest appearance. It's not going to happen, so just get it out the way. Yeah, there is really going to, to happen, be some kind of... Get- Why don't you want it to happen? I, I, I want, want to happen. I, I want to see her story, you know? I don't want... Spider- yeah, I, but- I, I, I do want Spider-Man to show up, but I don't want Spider-Man to show up because I don't want him to be the Tony Stark of this series. Well, don't worry, because they're not going, they can't, they don't have enough money to pay Tom Holland to do that right now. So don't worry about that. Um, and sorry about yeah, that. But there will be some kind, there will be some kind of superhero at the end that will be like, hey, Kamala Khan, welcome to the club. That will definitely happen. Because yeah. she's a, she's going to be a great, she's, she's a, she's a bona fide superhero that's going to be a key component to whatever Marvel's doing next. Captain um, Marvel makes so, sense. So, yeah. Nick Fury. Captain Marvel makes it obvious be... because, eh, yeah, Nick Fury. Nick Fury possibly. I could see a possibility that the actors who play Monica Rambeau might show up. I could see that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, Carol Danvers makes the most sense because he yeah. worships Carol Danvers, so it makes yeah. a lot more sense for right. her to show up. Mm-hmm. Um, but there you go. That is the first episode of Ms. Marvel. The, uh, we're going to cover each episode um, weekly, right, Mike? Every week. That's right. Every week. Yeah, just every week we will have all the news you need, all the news you can abuse. No, I was getting ready to ask about stuff. that. Do you have any news we can abuse? <laughs> I do have some news you can abuse, but real quick before we do news and abuse, uh, there was something about there was something about um, the first episode that I wanted to touch on, but I just totally forgot. It's totally blanked. Uh, I guess it wasn't important. Um, oh yeah, in the episode, do you remember that Scott Lang has a podcast? Yes. Have you looked to see if it's yes, a real thing? Yes, I would or love not? to listen to the. It's not a real thing, but I would love to okay. listen to a Scott Lang podcast. That's that. That's like that Paul Rudd doing a podcast at Scott Lang about Marvel stuff. That's yes, something. that would be uh, awesome. anyway. The uh, the the YouTube news. account at the beginning of the episode, her video that she uploaded mm-hmm. to YouTube. That's a real account. You can go look that that's up. A lot. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Do do, do are these kids doing this? That's hours of work for a few minutes. And yeah. like, yeah, is that what it. kids do? Yes. Like, is that it? I guess it's okay. <laughs> it just seems weird. It just seems odd to me. Like, it's just like, I have, I, I love doing this podcast with Mike. This podcast has been rewarding. It's been fun. We have 70 plus episodes. I can't believe we had that many episodes, but mm-hmm. there are days where I'm like, I don't feel like get, sitting down and talking. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I can't and, and I can't believe that this is kid who spends hours of her day making like a like a online cartoon type thing. It's just some, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. It's nuts. It makes me it makes me happy. I don't have kids because I don't have to worry about what they're doing. Right. Anyway, news you can't abuse. We have two items. Are you ready? I'm ready. First item. Are we getting a Thunderbolts movie? Yes, we are. It has been greenlit. There is going to be a Thunderbolts movie. There is nothing else to talk about. No one's been cast. No stories. But we are getting a Thunderbolts movie. Chances are we won't get that until 2024 or 2025. So just you have to just wait. I think the first time you told um, me about the Thunderbolts was during our Hulk podcast. Yep. So go back and listen to the that The Thunderbolts, podcast. for people who don't know. Yeah, and this is this is I want I want I want I got beef with the internet. A lot mm. of people are saying that the Thunderbolts are going to be Marvel's version of the Suicide Squad. That is absurdly wrong, and I'm going to say why. First of all, in DC, the Suicide Squad came around way way before Thunderbolts, so the Suicide Squad is way older. So it's not like 
Marvel made the Thunderbolts as a version of the Suicide Squad. That's not what happened. In the comics, the Thunderbolts were actually heroes. We all thought they were heroes. When we saw them originally in the Hulk episode, in the Hulk comic when they showed up, we had no idea who they are. We thought they were mm-hmm. a brand new set of heroes. It was revealed at the, e- at the very end of their first comic that they actually were the masters of evil in different costumes, and they were trying to trick the world into mm-hmm. getting power. And for 12 or so episodes, they acted like heroes so the world would trust them, so they would give them the same abilities, the same privileges as the Avengers. It didn't work. It all fell apart. But there was a later version of the Thunderbolts that were like the Suicide Squad. But I want to be very clear that the Thunderbolts were not initially the Suicide Squad. And when people say that, it makes me want to throw something across the room because that (laughs) wasn't true. So just keep that in mind. It was completely different than what they thought it was going to be. So there you go. Um, So James Gunn probably won't be directing the Thunderbolts movie. No, no, no. Who knows who's going to do it? Yeah. Uh, no again. Yeah. Um, we don't know for sure yet, but I'm thinking in this hints that Jane Foster's cancer storyline is going to be in Thor Love and Thunder, which means that Jane Foster might have cancer in the movie. That's mm. not news as much as a rumor boomer, but yeah. it might happen. I think I think and it's, it, to be honest with you, um, it's kind of close to my heart my mom has cancer she's like she's dealing with it like millions of other people are mm-hmm. but i would be it'd be very interesting to see how marvel will approach that from a hey cancer's a real thing you know people have it and i'm right. curious to see how they approach it because she was like, in the comics every time she took up the hammer and became thor her chemotherapy would retroactively not work so she was actually getting sicker and sicker mm. because she was trying to be thor um so I wonder if like maybe that's part that. of the the maybe they have an analog with that where you know Molnir was broken and put back together again. I'm wondering if maybe they're tying that in somehow as well. I don't know. Maybe that could be it. That could be. Um, real quick, there is a. I think we talked about this on Twitter. Uh, this is a side note, but there's a there's a gif of a very sexual sword lick. Um, <laughs> From oh, the yeah. movie, did you did you that. see that? Yeah, it was uh, Valkyrie. Oof. Yeah, Valkyrie's like in the battle or something. And she like she like licks her sword and only in the way that only she could do it. What's the actress's name? I forget. But anyway, I it's just do like not know. yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. It's like I easily stared at that for like maybe twenty minutes on, <laughs> again in an awkward way. Like what? Like what? It's just like bro, okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's something. that's all the news right. we have to abuse. So it's, I'm really looking forward to Thor now. Pretty stoked about it. I need to I need to download the graphic comic. I need to read that. So I'm yeah, going to download do. that. Get on the, that the, man. You you could you could read stuff too. You know, uh, you could you could do that too. Nah. <laughs> you know? That's okay. my that's uh, only, you for do, like, uh, only for special circumstances like the Marvel zombies. Yeah. All right, you do all the production stuff. I'll I will read the comics. How's that? Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um that's it. That's all we got. Yeah. And next week we're going to be talking about Ms. Uh, Marvel more Miss Marvel. Yeah, more of Miss Marvel. Yep. Uh, yeah. And um, Mike, uh, how can how, so? Let's say you were listening to this episode and yeah. you loved Miss Marvel, and you think that hey, my friend would love to listen to this because he loved Miss Marvel, or she loved Miss Marvel, or they love yes. Miss Marvel. Yes. Uh, how can he, she, they? get this to their friends so they can listen to this hit the share button right now send it to your friends send it to at least three of your friends Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking more like we're going to be talking more about miss marvel so you've got to you got to follow you've got to subscribe you've got to share you've got to rate you've got a star you get a thumbs up do all of that so you can catch what we're talking about next I want our podcast to be the official, not the unofficial podcast of Ms. Marvel. I want people to think, okay, Ms. Marvel came out. I'm going to watch that. And then I will immediately listen, listen to Jarvis and Mike talk about it. Right. And I want yeah. people to be like, why is it the podcast out yet? What's taking so long? I'm very upset. <laughs> I want people to get exactly. angry yeah. and then very happy when the podcast finally does come out. That's what I want. That's my desire. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
If you're it ever probably in a, if you're ever in an area with lots of people around, you know, you can you can try airdropping the podcast to somebody. Maybe, maybe yeah, be real creepy about it. Day. Yeah, yeah, or, or yeah. It's, actually, you know, don't do that. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes it when people do that. Just stop. It. Don't don't do that. Just just don't. How about this? Get make a make a QR code for a link of the show and like litter, like throw it around airports and stuff. I'd rather you guys do that. Don't litter, like you know, stick it to something. Yeah, make a sticker of it and post yeah. it on the wall, and then yeah. so a guy would have so a guy making ten bucks an hour has to scrape it off. Right. <laughs> yeah. But the most important <laughs> thing is to follow, share, subscribe, do all those things, yes. and, and and everything will be great.